2 News Today. Your first look at the weekend's top stories and breaking news as it happens. And the fight to provide more COVID relief continued through the night and well into this morning. Here's a live look as voting is still happening on the Senate floor. Day is what I call a good napping day. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely agree with that. However, I prefer a little bit of sun. And yesterday we did get about an hour, hour and a half or so of sunshine. Yeah, we got a little peekaboo of sun, <laughs> but I don't feel we're going to see that today. And with that winter weather means dangerous road conditions this weekend. We're taking a live look at I-70 and State Route 4 in Bethel Township. This is where it could likely get messy. This isn't some lake. This is actually someone's backyard. If you look a little bit inside. Come closer. We'll show you what's going on. Inside is water purifying packets. I'm told that just this one packet right here, this can make 100 gallons of clean water. So that's a lot of important work that they're doing here in Butler Township. Roads are still very clear. Everyone say thank you, ODOT, but the sun is making a lot of the snow melt. So as temperatures plummet tonight, experts say beware of black ice. I'm standing right next to I-75 South, so I'm gonna turn the camera on and let you see. And I wanna show this to you because as you can tell, there are no cars going south or north. That's because DPL just shut down the highway. The body cameras was actually one of the first recommendations made by the working group back last June. Now, eight months later, just last night, the city commission unanimously approved the measure. I talked with Commissioner Jeffrey Mims, who tells me how we got here and what he hopes happens next. Just one more step towards uh, improving the, the trust that we have in the community with regards to police relationships. Commissioner Jeffrey Mims Jr. is co-leading the Use of Force Police Reform Working Group. Their focus is assessing all use of force incidents used by Dayton police and identifying patterns and biases to inform review of force policies. They believe body cameras can help with their mission. It gives us that extra leverage of information and, and, and data about what is actually happening at police stops. The city already has a contract with Axon Enterprises for dash cameras. According to MIMS, adding the new body cameras through Axon will cost around $47,000. Already we've been in the process of experimenting with some of these things. We're one of the few large cities that does not have body cams. Now that the contract is approved, the law department will release a policy. That policy will address questions and concerns surrounding the use of the cameras for officers. Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley says she approves of the commission's decision to move forward. So I think this is just one great step that we've taken uh, when it comes to police reform. You'll see many more, but we're really serious about activating these issues that the community has said is such a priority. Here is where history was made, not just in Dayton, but in the country. Now one woman is renovating, rebuilding, and reclaiming the nation's first black YWCA. The story of this building on Paul Lawrence Dunbar Street starts 196 years ago. Built in 1825, it became the nation's first branch of the YWCA for African American women and girls in 1889. They represented in my young mind someone or some ones that had made it. In the 1960s, the next chapter of the story was written when these women entered the halls as young girls. So this has been my life journey. And it is a blessing when God gives you an assignment and you're able to see it. And here's my assignment. Now in 2021, Elizabeth Early says her vision is to bring back the mission of the original founders through the Early Visions Purpose Center. We will be teaching and tutoring, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Uh, we will be having music classes, tap dancing. This is also going to be a museum. Early purchased the mansion, secured federal funding, and even put her own arms to work restoring it. She's hoping it will become a community center for all to use. But she says she needs the community's help to get it finished by the summer of 2023. Everyone has to uh, roll up their sleeves. Now that we are going to preserve it, let's make sure that we embrace it for uh, the futures to come. A place for sisterhood, service, and success. When uh, the ladies of the Westside YWCA told me I was enough, that's all I needed to know, that I was enough and I can make this happen.